team. How you doing? Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and there is an extreme gardening warning. There are gonna be so many gardening analogies in this video. But look at the Punisher, he has a, a sword. So before I start, mind your business, the latest Theosophy book with uh, Kelsey and I has been out for just over 24 hours, made $10,000 in the first 24 hours of a $25,000 fixed goal. That's basically me turning Indiegogo into Kickstarter. It's like, I gotta make it or I get nothing. Um, traditionally, people have kind of just set themselves up for success. <laughs> for an easy, kind of meaningless win, they'll say, uh, my goal is $500. It's like, that won't even cover the lettering. But then you're like, hey, I made 48,000% of my goal. It's like, okay, whatever. I need, we need to talk about what comics actually cost. And when you're talking about production, uh, digital pre-press, printing, um, fulfillment, and then refunds, yes, the budget for, you know, a 26 page floppy is absolutely twenty-four to $25,000. So $25,000 is when this would start turning a profit. That's estimated at getting about a thousand backers. So <laughs> thanks for that. Um, traditionally, you make all your money in the first two days and the last two days. So the goal was 10,000 in the first two days, 10,000 in the last two days, 5,000 in the middle three. So we are ahead of schedule, um, but please uh, don't dally. Uh, it's only one week. Uh, you're like, why is it one week? It's like, because this wasn't on the schedule. The schedule was already very busy. And that's the only way I could approve this, you know, to myself. It's like, okay, it's got to be real light, you know, footprint on the schedule. So uh, last night I added the, uh, I keep it real simple. There's a bunch of add-ons. Once you click on this, it'll show you them. Impossible Stars Nexus, the previous two Theosophy books, or you can just get the three pack to get all of them. I made this little thumbnail. It was very fun because these imported it at the same size, but then this one <coughs> didn't. And it wasn't letting me doing, you know, fractions of a percentage. So I had to manually get it to kind of stagger them. I had a lot of fun making that thumbnail. So um mainstream comics is acting pretty normal which is abnormal for them. They're used to acting like lunatics. They've gotten pretty normal in the last few months. I mean, even people like Alex DeCampi are being fairly pleasant. Um, some of it is, you know, you know, Trump is out of office. Uh, but the other part is that the sales are, you know, lacking and everyone's like, oh, you can't be a psycho all the time. <laughs> So people who have purposely antagonized uh, readers like Jason Aaron, um, I saw this retweeted by Tom Brevoort, but I don't have an account, so I can't. I had to copy. Now, now it doesn't show that it was retweeted by uh, Tom Brevoort, but you see John Romita Jr. Does that mean he liked it or does that mean his friend? Whatever, lots of people liked it. So he says, hey, thanks to everybody who read and enjoyed Punisher number one this week, especially the folks who were skeptical, but still gave it a shot and liked what they saw. Believe me, we are just getting started. Cheers. So I bought this, and then uh, I waited uh, a day for it to go onto a pirate site so I could read it, because Comixology makes it effectively unreadable. So I, I bought it, I paid for it, then I waited to read it, then I reviewed it, and I loved it. It was excellent. And was, there were even parts where it could have gone bad. There was this organization called Molon Lave, you know, and I'm like, come and take them, come and take the weapons, the, the Spartan set. And I'm like, oh God, this is gonna be some anti-gun, anti, no, it was, it was just there. You know, if you wanted to say it symbolically stood for a group or certain groups, that was fine, but you weren't hammered over the head with it. Um, it was good, solid, fun. It was really awesome. And see Jason Aaron talking, especially to detractors and critics like this, is great. 
So there's this uh, phrase IP farm, and it's, you know, Disney buys Marvel, so they have the characters, so they can have them at Disneyland, whatever. But also you're buying all of the stories and the lore, and if there are 80 years of, of publishing history, well, you should be able to adapt it for another 80 years. The interesting thing is that they are adapting almost nothing uh, that was made in pretty much the last 10 years. Uh, when you see the um, development of things like Captain Marvel and how they significantly change her history and her powers when adapting her for live action, if you read the stories about Ms. Marvel, where they changed all of the powers, like the entire power set, which is, for superheroes, fairly major. You're not gonna have a Flash movie where he doesn't move fast, you know? And it's not like, it's like, oh no, we just changed how she uses her powers. Um, no, a 100% different set of powers. Now she essentially has magical bracelets that grant wishes, which is, not what the comic book says. <laughs> um, but uh, there's very, very, very little. Even stuff like, well, you're like, no, they, you know, that Matt Fraction story, yeah, that was about 10 years ago, pretty, pretty close. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule, but basically, uh, ironically enough, Disney has adapted very little of Marvel's content after they bought Marvel. Now, there's always been this kind of weird bubble around Marvel where they weren't held to the same standards of behavior and performance as other companies and subsidiaries and subdivisions and all that type of stuff. You know, we've seen, uh, I think specifically, Clownfish TV and they have a whole Disney channel and they're like, stuff that wouldn't fly for anyone on the Disney side is completely fine for Marvel which uh, I think on Marvel took a while to get the hint that it wasn't because they were special, it's because um, Disney didn't really care. So here's where the gardening analogies start. By the way, there's these new weeds. Like, it's, I, I'm learning so many things. I thought, I always assumed like a lawn had the same weeds. No, like every season has different weeds. I actually, <laughs> I went to the store the other day and I saw like the weeds in the yard, what happens when you don't pluck them and they grow larger and uh, they just turn into a larger version of the weed. <laughs> I thought it was gonna turn into a bush or a tree or something. Um, but no, uh, so um, uh, the weeds I'm pulling now are not the weeds I was pulling six months ago. Uh, so Marvel's looked at itself as a farm. It's like, hey, you know, we're a farm. It's like, no, you were a farm. You're now a lawn, you know? A farm has to produce. And you're gonna cycle the different areas of the farm. You're gonna plant on one, you're gonna you know, fertilize on the other, and then other, you're gonna leave fallow so it can replenish with nitrates and all that happy horse shit. Pun intended, like literally. Um, but a lawn nearly has to be not embarrassing. <laughs> when I was in Iraq the second time, I was put on uh, some kind of detail. And I was just basically guarding an Iraqi architect while he was, um, or civil engineer, while he was overseeing some work on the base. And uh, it was only three days, but we're still friends to this day because it's like 12 hour days in the sun. Just me and him who speak English and the workers who didn't. So. We got to know each other pretty well, and we're still in contact to this day. And uh, he was interested in uh, moving to America, which did happen like 10 years later. And he was asking me these questions, and he was like, you know, he wanted to fit in. He was like, you know, how do I fit in in America? Like, how do I get accepted? And, and I told him, you know, when you got your house, you just don't play your music too loud and mow the lawn, and you're good. You're just, that, that's it. That's it. Um, so a lawn is not expected to produce. <laughs> a lawn's goal is to not be embarrassing. Now, there are sections of my lawn that are quite good and very proud of. And there are others that are pretty terrible 
but I'm learning. For instance, if something says that it's a weed killer, that it's safe for grass, it isn't. Yeah, I lost about six months progress on two significant sections of the lawn by using a weed killer that was safe for grass. It absolutely was not. And it, it not only did it kill some of the grass, a lot of it, but the stuff it didn't kill, it ain't never been right since. <laughs> like, it is just spindly and sparse and weird, and I just need to rip it out and start again. But as I mentioned in a video uh, a week or so ago, there were areas where I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I planted seeds like two or three times, and nothing took. So I just gave up on it. And now, like six months later, about half of them are growing some really nice grass. I guess the seeds were, went into the dormant mode or some shit like that. But um, it's a it's a chilling realization to realize that you work at a section of a billion dollar corporation that they don't care about. <laughs> As people always say, a mid-tier movie, just one movie, just on the box office, not on merchandising, box office and streaming and all that type of stuff. Just the movie itself, one mid-tier Marvel hit will make more for them than all of Marvel comics in the same year. Uh, and the large ones, you know, uh, will outdo it significantly. It will be you know, several years. Um, but we're seeing uh, Marvel uh, act more normal when they're realizing, oh shit, they don't need us. <laughs> but they do have some. They do have some wiggle room. They can act kind of stupid in a way that they couldn't at, Dis at Disney, because their job is mainly not to skyline themselves. Don't do anything that's going to make the mainstream press. Tom Brevoort being snide and condescending is not going to make them mainstream press. So he can do that essentially indefinitely. But as I pointed out, even some real terrors out there have been pretty chill lately. All of a sudden you're like, oh, I can't just tell people, don't buy it. My back. Indefinitely forever? Eventually? <laughs> Eventually we'll have to stop saying that because we don't have infinity customers? That's weird. So um, when, I, when I realized the difference between a farm and a lawn as it applies to Marvel, uh, number one, I was impressed. Number two, if you're working at Marvel, yeah. You know, you can, you can kind of shut up and you're, you're just kind of waiting to, to, to be noticed or not noticed. It's like, you know, nothing to see here. Just need about 300 million a year and I know, I know Shang-Chi. <laughs> netted you more than that, but we didn't get any bad press and variety or deadlines yet. <laughs> You're just waiting for a ghost to pass you by and not call you. So anyway, thanks to everyone who made uh, the first 24 hours of Mind Your Business very successful. Um, I understand that these things are kind of uh, artsy and wonky and weird, but fun, so I always appreciate when people take a chance on them. Uh, there's also, if you missed out on Nexus or Impossible Stars, I have some issues left of that. Uh, but go check it out. So I got to make 25000 because if I don't, it's not profitable. Um, so uh, definitely don't dally. <laughs> and uh, thanks to everyone who uh, backed this and will back it. Oh, and I did a contest a couple of days for someone to get a free copy. I thought there was going to be like 20 entries. There are well over 200. And uh, they're still being submitted, even though it clearly said, like, this is the drop dead time. They're still being submitted. So I decided to make it five winners. So I'll go through most of that today, and then they'll be announced in a community post. Thanks for watching. Bye.
Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, this is my entry for the First World Problems 2022 <laughs> contest. I am so agitated right now because it took me forever to find high resolution pics of Al from Home Improvement. Yes, this is going to be germane later in the video. <laughs> so before I start, Rock and Roll Ninja Graphic Novel. It's the only Indiegogo campaign I have up until later today when Kelsey and I launched the new Theosophy book, Mind Your Business. An unfunny TikTok comedian helps a shoplifter finance his roommate's trip to Russia invaded Ukraine. And no, those are not random words I picked out of the dictionary. That's, that's the actual uh, story. Uh, so um, I saw this yesterday and uh, it stuck out. It really stuck out. So uh, somebody quite rudely wrote to Tom Taylor and said, hey idiot, how's your woke Superman doing these days? And Tom Taylor, <laughs> smug potatoy face, grinned a lopsided grin, and he typed, Superman, son of Kal-El, is doing incredibly well. Thanks for asking. And then he gave this screenshot <laughs> um, that says, number one in superhero graphic novels, number one in superhero comics and graphic novels, number one in 45 minute comic and graphic novel short reads. Now, someone, as someone who has going to Amazon a lot. Um, I noticed something, that this is just kind of like floating in this, this ether right here. But if you go to the Amazon page, it's a very busy page. There is just stuff crammed in almost every section of this page. So here's Superman, son of Kal-El, volume one, the truth. And there's just, done, there's a little bit of empty space here. There's a little bit of empty space here, but everything's kind of crowded up against something. If you try to screenshot one part of this, you would end up screenshotting a lot of other things. So, <laughs> I uh, scroll in here, and let's just say your mileage may vary. So he said this was number one. <laughs> in superhero graphic novels, it's actually thousand and one, um, and then it's two other. Uh, oh no! So uh, he said it was one of superhero comics and graphic novels. Um, so right now it's just showing three different metrics: uh, one ninety-five in DC comics and graphic novels, two eighty-nine in mystery graphic novels. What is the mystery? How much gayer can you make this comic book? <laughs> it's like, and then it's a thousand. So you were off by a thousand. Now, having books on Amazon, I know that this works in a very funny way. In fact, I am a New York Times bestselling author for one day in a subcategory that doesn't exist anymore. But I was in this zombie anthology that when it was released in stores and then it, then it was put onto Amazon, for one day, it was the top book. Um, so I'm guessing that this is not an actual screenshot, but maybe like a collage. Because, and I mean, sometimes you'll you'll be that number one for like an hour or a couple of minutes. I don't know how often they update it, but um, the point is <laughs> that Tom Taylor writes Superman, <laughs> but no one talks about the story less than him. He is completely uninterested, see, uninterested, not disinterested, uninterested in his own work. He doesn't talk about the story, he doesn't talk about the plots, he doesn't talk about the characters, he doesn't talk about the OC. All he talks about is the amazing sales that nobody can actually show. Um, and, uh, oh, then this, this is his uh, justification. Our comic also inspired all of this last weekend. Pretty amazing. So here's where we get Al from. Uh, so it's got to be so rough to be a normie gay person, which is, as far as I can see, 95, 98%. Like I said, 95% of gay men in America look like Al from Home Improvement. So if you go to him, you're like, hey, uh, 
you know, Superman's gay. He's like, no, he's not. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's dating Lois Lane. Well, they're married now. Yeah, he's not gay. No, his son is. He's probably going to roll his eyes like, yeah, everyone's gay these days. He's, <laughs> he's going to be like, I was gay when it was actually not an advantage. Uh, so he's, he's going to be like, so let me guess. There's like... A uh, drag queen, probably someone with like the entire chest area cut out, just like the like cliche beyond cliche. It's like pretty much. He's like, I'm guessing also there's like a lot of open mouth smiles and like yes queenings. Like, yeah, <laughs> pretty pretty much. It's pretty much just. The, most cliche thing imaginable. That, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so this is actually part of just the Sydney uh, Mardi Gras, which was Mardi Gras revelers celebrate hope and love with a message for Ukraine. And the message is apparently, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I love, I love how this is just a generic party, but they have to like make it like political and topical. This is 40,000 drunk Australians. Just showing up to be 40,000 drunk Australians. They're like, with a, speci with a special message for Ukraine. <laughs> what, is this your message for Ukraine? Also, why is not any, why are, do you get a choice of where you look? What, the drag queens and the, look this direction and the gay men just look at the camera? Okay. This has nothing to do with the comic. This comic could have been literally nothing but empty pages. And uh, Tom Taylor would have liked it as much as cared about it as much. It's, it's just a freaking virtue signal from a guy who knows better to a bunch of people who will never read comics ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting back to the point, um, these may have been uh, actual stats, uh, and, but I'm talking about like for like one hour. <laughs> like, come on. No, I, I, why do I know that this didn't last very long? Because nobody's talking about the story. And making a character gay in DC Comics in 2022 is the opposite of groundbreaking. It's the opposite of brave. It's the opposite of interesting. And that's why Tom Taylor never talks about his own story. He doesn't talk about his own character in any way except for to say they exist and that they are gay. Uh, this, it's all about this. It's all about getting mainstream and uh, non-comic reading, uh, uh, what do you call it? The opposite of uh, privileged groups to uh, pretend to be interested in something for a day. Wait, these are the supposed, like, Synonyms for gay? Oh, wait, I don't understand. Breeders? Why is breeders on there? I've never heard Kiki. Is that like Australian slang for gay? So yeah, congratulations, Tom. You Hi everyone. Uh, so he's he's gonna be like. the Sydney uh, Mardi Gras, which was Mardi Gras revelers celebrate hope and love with a message for Ukraine. And the message is apparently, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I, I, love, I love how this is just a generic party, but they have to like make it like political and topical. This is 40,000 drunk Australians. Just showing up to be 40,000 drunk Australians. They're like, with a special, with a special message for Ukraine. <laughs> what is this your message for Ukraine? 
Also, why is not any- why are- do you get a choice of where you look? What, the drag queens and the look this direction and the gay men just look at the camera? Okay. This has nothing to do with the comic. This comic could have been literally nothing but empty pages. And uh, Tom Taylor would have liked it as much, as cared about it as much. It's, it's just a freaking virtue signal from a guy who knows better to a bunch of people who will never read comics ever. <laughs> um, getting back to the point, um, these may have been uh, actual stats, uh, and, but I'm talking about like for like one hour. <laughs> like, come on. No, I, I, why do I know that this didn't last very long? Because nobody's talking about the story. And making a character gay in DC Comics in 2022 is the opposite of groundbreaking. It's the opposite of brave. It's the opposite of interesting. And that's why Tom Taylor never talks about his own story. He doesn't talk about his own character in any way except for to say they exist and that they are gay. Uh, this, it's all about this. It's all about getting mainstream and uh, non-comic reading uh, uh, what do you call it? The opposite of uh, privileged groups to uh, pretend to be interested in something for a day. Wait, these are the supposed like synonyms for gay? Oh, wait, I don't understand. Breeders? Why is breeders on there? I've never heard of Kiki. Is that like Australian? slang for gay so yeah congratulations Tom you got 35 <laughs> uh, gay people to pretend to be interested in Superman for an afternoon you won you fucking won awesome right I guess <laughs> Which part of this was a special message to Ukraine? <laughs> it's just random ass shit to say. I apologize to all the normie Al from Home Improvement gay men out there who have to deal with cliches like this as being their representation in a mass media. So before I go, rock and roll ninja graphic novel. I've debated taking this down and just making an add-on but I'm telling you, rock and roll ninja, rock and roll ninja, rock and roll ninja, rock and roll ninja is, uh, it's special. Not like short plus special, like it's special. I would consider it to be the most slept on book I've ever been involved with. Like it's awesome. Like, like people are like, sell it to me. It's like, do you like things? I don't know. Do you like, like every cool movie from like the last 40 years and ninjas and... Like, yeah, like you're gonna love it. I know it's got a weird name, but you're gonna love it. And uh, especially all the people who bought the previous Theosophies and you love them, it's, it's the same crew as uh, Do As You're Told, The Ballad of No. And um, uh, weird, so Theosophy books are, you take the real world as things are happening and you do your take on them, but you're doing it as it's emerging, as it's developing. Like when we started this, Russia hadn't invaded Ukraine. We had a start for the story, but it, like, where is this going? And then that happened, and then all we just made it all connect. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye. Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, and I can tell you my love for you will still be strong after the boys season three trailer has gone really really bad intro and with a new teaser now hitting the internet i thought we'd break down all the easter eggs hidden details and things you miss in the boys season three trailer there will be some spoilers here in regards to the comics so if you don't want anything ruined then i recommend that you turn off hi everyone it's your boy zach and uh this is my entry for the first world problems 2022 <laughs> Hi everyone, test, test, test. Okay, it looks like the benzo tape is working. <laughs> That's not that great. Uh, before I start, Rock and Roll Ninja Graphic Novel, link in the description. Mind your business, 
new Theosophy book launching at 12 noon Central Time today. So uh, we're going to review Punisher 1, and you might be like, what's going on? Let's go see like an action scene later on. Okay, cool. Man. This is what happens when you look at panel by panel. So now, from now on, every single time that I uh, review comics, I have to prove I actually bought it and then go flip through it on a freaking pirate site. Uh, I almost wanted to do a video on this, but I thought it was too boring. <laughs> the Comixology CEO and founder has just been given a new job in Amazon, a completely different project, and he's all happy. It's like the relationship from comic book readers to Comixology is the same as the breakup scene uh, in American Psycho with Reese Witherspoon. It's like you're just not terribly important to me. It's like that's you just gotta realize you're just not terribly important uh, to Amazon at all. So uh, this was announced announced a while ago, and uh, oh, it's actually got the normal skull on the cover. Why would you do that? <laughs> so this is um, the Punisher in, uh, well, not exactly in charge of the hand, um, but in a prime position in the hand is basically you know, their lead killer. And uh, it's funny, they introduce him, and the scene was so good that I didn't even notice that it was a new skull. The skull is supposedly being changed because the alt-right like it, but so does everyone else. <laughs> I just did air quotes for both of those phrases. So, um, but uh, you can see the art right here is, is amazing. And then we get to see that he's the main uh, killer for the hand. And he's a real killer. He's an equal opportunity. I'm not used to scenes like this where they do that, you know, Netflix diversity. And then it's like, yeah, kill all these people. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Um, but <coughs> apparently he was, okay, the benzone tape is not working. Um, apparently he was essentially 
uh, NFL combines. <laughs> the uh, the hand did an L NFL combine on him to test him out, and he passed with flying colors. So much so that the uh, proprietress, proprietress, uh, some old lady, seemingly uh, not the leader of the hand, but in a high up position, uh, she's like into it. You see this action scene? It was great. It just went on for like 10 pages. And no, that's not me being passive aggressive. Like, it was actually cool. <laughs> just, it was Frank's guy. Handcuffs on the bed frame. Uh, so it just goes on and on. It's like this really, she's maybe more than 10 pages, more like 15. She is so freaking switched on by this. She's just like, you know, I'm into this totally. So um, he he, get, he gets recruited, but not in an entry level, in a very high level uh, position, basically a consultant on a killing. And then there's a surprise that works really well. It was interesting. There's actually a comments section on a pirate site that has a very vibrant community and, and conversation, and it's like an intelligent conversation. It's not just, um, you're like, I'm not saying, there's no airheads in here saying, um, like, you can be a bad person, that's all you get. Like, nobody's, people are talking about the comics, past comics. So basically what it boiled down to is a lot of people didn't trust Jason Aaron. They're like, his, and nobody was like, whoa, SJW, they're just like, his most recent stuff has not been good. People were pointing out that He's been on a lot of teams lately, and that's where he's been failing. But geez, I remember being in Graffenbeer, <laughs> wrapping up some training and going to the PX like 15 years ago, and getting his initial run on Wolverine with Ron Garney, and that was excellent. So basically, people are talking to each other intelligently uh, on a pirate site about how, eh, I'm not sure if I trust him. It's like, yeah, but he's kind of doing what he's good at, you know, his old wheelhouse. You know, a tough guy, anti-hero, in a cool adventure. So it's absolutely a recommend. This is ridiculous. Look at this shit. That's the default. It wastes almost the entire screen. And if you're like, oh, well, that's because you're on a tablet, please look at this box right there. That's what you would see if you were on your phone. Look what happens when you get a horse. <laughs> Uh, no, the experience on Comixology is so bad, but the book was actually excellent. It's weird, after five years of utter abjective failure, uh, it turns out that hiring people based on their sexuality and skin color uh, is not a good business strategy. They're just like, who's the guy who was good at writing like tough guys like uh, when George Bush was president? Yeah, have him write The Punisher? Uh, yeah, that could work. And it, amazingly, Done. So it's definitely recommend Punisher, just Punisher, no the on it. And uh, mind your business, an unfunny TikTok comedian helps a shoplifter finance his roommate's trip to Russia and invade Ukraine. <laughs> this is another Theosophy book. You're going to love it. I'm very, very, very excited about it. Thanks for watching. Bye. I'm Maylin Lee. Since I turned 13, I've been doing my own thing, making my own moves, 24-7, 365. I wear what I want, say what I want, and I will not hesitate to do a spontaneous cartwheel if I feel so moved. <laughs> oh, crap. Hi, everyone. It's your boy, Zach. And uh, this is my entry for the First World Problems 2022 <laughs> contest. I am so agitated right now because it took me forever to find high resolution pics.
ます
meu povo. E aí... Aí solta a embreagem devagarinho, devagarinho.
Fia de menino. Olha. Vagal de ano.
is a fetish for other people. Vamos lá. Vai, do jeito que eu tô dizendo. Tô estão devagar aí, né? Pronto. Olha pra...
Vamos lá. Vai, do jeito que eu tô dizendo. Tô escutando devagar aí, né? Pronto. Olha pra frente. Olha pra frente. Segure a embreagem. Pise na embreagem. Pise na embreagem. Solte o freio. Solte o freio. Tá bom? Carro aqui. Eles podem vir dentro de um barco. Eles podem vir ao mesmo que esse aqui. Me encontro.
recording. Excuse me. They're obviously giving me permission. Hey, all right. Beautiful. about to listen to a dinosaur from the past. He is a dinosaur. Do you know what you're running for fucking life? It's a dinosaur. Yeah. 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 Today, I had an interview with Child Protective Services about to take my son away from my family. So if you don't think this is real for me, you're wrong. But we're at a university, and right now we're in a weird chapter of history where somehow we think it's appropriate to let somebody like this speak. The university did nothing. If that, if this isn't the university, this is the Young Conservatives of Texas. No, the university did nothing to stop the them. The university sponsored yeah, the He's been invited here. We were not invited. He's been invited by our university. You are in the right. But right now, we've had our protests. We need to let him speak. Why? 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 Free speech! Free speech! Free speech! Free speech! He's got a right to give his opinion. He's got a right.
That's backwards. It, it's I crazy. have a pot. You're blocking your fucking. Don't fucking touch me. You touch me while we're getting to find the fuck out. Can you, Mike? You are powerless. Powerless. Okay, not a problem. It is this one. It is this thing. I got you. You mind if I get my stuff, though? Oh!
Dare, Bing Crosby, and some of Irving Berlin's finest. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. A bit of festive cheer that gets better with age. Holiday Inn. Tonight on Channel 5's Prime Movie. Do you? Holiday Inn is brought to you by Dashes, the largest selection of traditional and designer men's clothing. Through the sixth day of Christmas at Dashes, of course, dirt makes a price is quite pleasant. The sales on a Dashes is pleasant. Pleasant. The sales on it quite pleasant. Quite pleasant. The sales on a Dashes where you'll get a... If you think all apple pies are basically the same, look again. Let's see something special. Wait, you should see the dancing girls. There's evil business. Way. Uh -huh. More of our feature film right after this.
You can make millions of people happy. So it's off to Hollywood for the world's favorite frog. But on the way... You think this crowd's ugly? You should see the dancing girls. There's evil businessmen. Follow that frog! Fast cars. He picked up a weirdo. Romance. Pixie. me. me. And danger. Say goodbye to the frog, pig. <laughs> On the Muppet Movie at 8 on Channel 5's Prime Movie Friday. Do you hate to iron? We thought so. Let's face it, for years you've been tired. Friday. 8 on Channel 5's Romance. Say goodbye. And danger. They got guns. And danger. Take a bite to the frog. Get to me. And danger. Take a bite to the frog, pig. On the Muppet Movie at 8 on Channel 5's Prime Movie Friday. Do you hate to iron? We thought. He says, they say Christmas is 87. This is 87.
Okay. They're gonna keep making making an example of our cause. We have to let him speak. We have to humor. He wants to be This is called tactical respect for human rights. It's good when we can take it away later. Professors, this is what you made. You made this. of you people in this room do not agree with him. And those of you that do, Let him speak for I his daughter. hope that you... I hope you love your children. Because, uh, sorry that you don't right now, because if they came out as trans, you wouldn't fucking believe them, and they'd kill themselves. It's that simple. <laughs> Do you know that you somebody knows you? That's why he's not trying. Yes, you are so misinformed. No one's not on my talk. No one is on my talk. This is what happened. Here I am. I must call this advice. This is what happened. I'm the dog. 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 I'm the d
talking to you about any transgender issue, anything about gender dysphoria. I'm not even allowed to tell you whether my son is a boy or a girl. Plus, it includes a lifetime ban from all social media, a lifetime ban from doing any radio interviews, newspaper interviews, television interviews, a lifetime ban. So this is clearly, <clears throat> clearly illegal. So I don't follow it. Um, because I didn't follow it, they took my children away from me on the 31st of July. <laughs> Support and I've been current on child support. It's really good. Why the court order say that? It, it doesn't say. It does. <laughs> does. Yeah. We've all kind of seen it. We've kind of all seen it. So really? the, like that now. the records are sealed. So my guess is you're going off some court order. But no, I've been current on child support. I've never been accountable to go to jail or anything for not paying child support. I've got a lot of child support. I've got almost thirty thousand dollars a year in child support. So, I, but I'm current. What happened was during COVID, um, I think it was about 200,000 people in the child support system, in the Texas child support system at the Attorney General's office. Uh, they missed the payment, but they didn't notify anyone. So I didn't know until three months later. So I was a month behind for three months, but I paid it. So that's what that was right. Cisgender, Within the hearing range of a child is what it says. Making any video, doing any type of interviews, news interviews, documentaries, television appearances, radio appearances, internet radio appearances, blog posts, social media posts, social media posts, picturing the children, doing live social media feeds of the children, of the children. You have miseducated these students. Can you define chemicals, castration, please? 
That's exactly right. Make sure he got his footage. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's go. Can we do it again? What is it? You want to look like red cards? What is it? How often does it actually happen? Or, 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 or,
if someone disagrees with something, you can stand up and spit on them. That's how yes, this is. Yes, you can do it. And you're so story a few years ago. So we were looking for a place to start the film and to keep the focus on Putin. And it seemed to us that one of the more insightful moments about who Putin is in this uh, in this war is that National Security Council meeting that he has about the um, breakaway provinces. Can you describe it? We're going to have the footage of him walking in by himself, being at the end of the room, uh, his advisors arrayed on the other side. Can you describe that moment, um, what we're seeing? Yeah, that Security Council meeting was so wild. And the whole time I was watching it, I kept thinking, this is what a Politburo meeting in 1939 must have looked like, when everybody sitting in a cabinet minister's chair was the third replacement since 1937. And each person sitting in that chair knew what had happened to his predecessors and uh, you know how many bullets they got in the back of the head in the basement of Lubanka. And I just figured, this is how it must have gone down. This is how it must have felt. This is how these people must have spoken. Uh, this is, you know, that fear, that discomfort, that they were clearly, you know, dancing bears performing for their uh, master who is impossible to please. What, what else struck me about it was um, the distance between him and the people sitting in that room was so vast. I mean, from every angle, you could see it. Another thing that stuck out to me was Sergei Narushkin, the spy chief, getting up there, stumbling through his words, getting up, dressing down by Vladimir Putin, who says, no, no, speak clearly. No, 
speak clearly. No, that's not it. Say it again. You know, he, he dressed him down like a, like a schoolboy. And this is one of the main Siloviki. He is the head of the SVR, the uh, foreign spy service. And what's fascinating is that that Security Council meeting was pre-taped. It was shown on Russian state TV as a live broadcast. They told their viewers it was live. But then Russian journalists noticed that everybody's watches showed a different time. So they taped that, and they decided to show Narishkin getting humiliated like that, like a schoolmaster taking him to task. So the fact that they chose to show that was really interesting, and it made a lot of observers wonder if this was in retaliation or because Putin suspected that the leaks were coming from Narushkin's people because everybody was wondering how did the Americans have such good intelligence? They knew each step of what Putin was going to do. I mean, once the war started moving, it was, it all went as the White House had. another year in the digital dark age where things go from bad to worse then they go to will this nightmare ever end I don't know about you but sometimes I need inspiration to help me focus and get my goals in order and who better to give inspiration than Kim Kardashian the greatest American success story no. be born rich oh hang out with rich people <laughs> have sex with celebrities Get a TV show. Use the TV show to put out products. Then use your global conglomerate.
Global Conglomerate TV show to further signal boost everything you're doing. Use your platform for profit. I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. Isn't that what Rocky was based on? Someone born wealthy and had everything handed to them, including some of their plastic surgeries that we pretend didn't happen? Oh, well, whatever. Anyway, Vanity tweeted out this on the 9th of March. I have the best advice for women in business. Kim Kardashian saying, Business. Get your <laughs> ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself. 
I love how like there's some chick off camera and she's like, it's so true. As another woman in the background nods. You can tell she works hard for those nails. It's probably like a sister, isn't it? It's got to be like just Kardashians because there's no way in hell. It's got to be people who are just out of touch. When people that want to work have a good work environment where everyone loves what they do. Let me do. get this together today. No toxic work environments and show up and do the work. If you're the smartest person in that I think loving the work you do is a privilege few people have. I think most people, if not 99% of the population, is doing a job that they can get or that's willing to pay them or they have to take care of their family and kids. I think most people aren't lucky enough to go, I love my job. I don't even love what the hell I'm doing. And I'm in a better position than probably 70% of the world. Like, Jesus Christ. What work does Kim Kardashian do on the real? I don't see Kim Kardashian in this reality doing any work. Like, for real. She probably comes in Rome and has people pitch her ideas in clothing and they're like, okay, we can get this made in, like, Uruguay for pennies on the dollar. Needless to say, this video came out and it, uh, it didn't go well on Twitter because Twitter is the perfect place for eat the rich. It's really strange, though. Like, Twitter's all about eating the rich unless, like, it's a celebrity they like or OnlyFans girls. So, like, if an OnlyFans chick shows up and she buys, like, an expensive $200,000 car, it's all, yes, queen, work. But, like, if Elon Musk shoots a rocket off into space and successfully has it come back down to Earth, everybody's like, Cam, redistribute his wealth. Elon Musk needs to do butthole pitches. Then Twitter will be cool with him. I'm not even going to bother trying to find this interview because if I get the whole thing, I'm pretty sure Vanity would strike me anyway. But what does Kim Kardashian do? Last time I paid this girl attention, she was selling people cryptocurrency on Instagram back when we had that. Remember the cryptocurrency craze where every asshole thought they could become a millionaire, so they started buying all sorts of stupid coins. Then you had male Twitch streamers using their platform to sell milk coins and whatnot. Then they pump and dump and leave, and their fan base is like, it's okay, do you, Marky? You know? <laughs> Chat, by the way, that MILF token Wah. that I did a while back, I already told you guys, don't buy that. Wah. I got paid a bag to do that shit. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. How many of you guys actually bought it? <laughs> you get the hell out! Lord have mercy. I don't think Kim worked that day. She put out a tweet and made money. Let it go. Anyway. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your up and work. This one goes out to all my pores out there. I know you're down on your luck, but someone once told me being poor is a choice. So stop. Stop being poor. Stop being poor. Um, and I, I just think that people that are born on third base shouldn't be talking about how easy it is to hit a home run. Drag her. Slay her. Sipping on that true tea, hunty. Oh. Gag. Amanda tweets. Non-toxic work environment. Intern talent management. Uh, Jenner communications. Oh. Oh, my. Woodland Hills, California. Uh, Part-time unpaid internship. Oh, that's what I want to do. Let me go work for some rich and not get paid. Get your ass up and work. Looking for part-time errand runner, job entails errands, local city, organized in-home, gift wrapping, helping the, with kids' toys, motorized cars, etc. Please do not apply if you don't have the following. Must currently be enrolled in school as a student. This is an unpaid internship and will receive credit through school only. Work. Must have a car. You better, it's LA. Prefer someone living in Los Angeles Full-time, not just for the summer. Ability to work Monday and Wednesday, 9.30 to 6 p.m. Who we are, a successful talent, talent management company who works with high-profile reality TV stars. Who you are, an active college student. You must be current student and the internship is solely to gain experience while receiving school credits. What experience would this give you besides being an errand boy or girl for some out-of-touch celebrity? And then, like, for real, this is a job experience in a normal job. Someone who has an interest in learning about in the entertainment industry. What's there to learn? Chloe likes green M&Ms and Kim likes red. Dependable and fast thinking with fresh ideas. 
I guess you gotta keep it fresh when you're wrapping presents for spoiled rich kids. Highly organized with great personal skills. Must be located in LA. What we offer. Internship is unpaid, but we do offer school credit. Pickups, drop-offs from various vendors, personal errands for clients and family. You will work under a personal assistant. Wow. They're rich enough to actually pay someone and they're still looking for free work. You better be ready to work for Kim. Get your ass out there and work. Kim's body's got so much plastic in it, she didn't want to bother working to get the body. She just goes to a surgeon. Angela says, Please, Kim, the only time your ass is up for is for doggy style. Kim is out here telling poor people they are lazy. And Kanye West is losing his goddamn mind, running around dressed up like the Phantom of the Fucking Opera. When I was growing up, Michael Jackson was dressed like Captain Crunch, and he was dancing on top of cars outside of courtrooms. You coming up right now, Kanye calling himself Yeezy and he wearing a cape. And then he wonder why Kim left. Is she leaving for David Dubrick? Well, I can't remember that dude's name. It's something like that. The guy who's got beady eyes, which I shouldn't even be saying anything mean to, because technically we look very similar in the face. So he's very handsome. I kind of understand it now. Jessica DeFino used to work for the Kardashians. I was an editor on the Kim Kardashian app in 2015 in LA. Work days and nights and weekends. Could only afford groceries from the 99 cent store. Call out sick more than once because I couldn't put gas in my car to get to the office. And was reprimanded for freelancing on the side. Hearts. Well, Jessica, I guess you just didn't want to put the work in at Jenner Industries, you lazy bitch. The wildest thing about that job, I saw firsthand how the most famous women in the world Frankenstein an impossible standard of beauty, pushing the rest of us to keep up with them, weaponizing the standard of beauty to sell products and still never felt good enough. That, the standard of beauty is for everybody. Hello? Did you see the Avengers movie? Was anybody grossly out of shape in the men? No. The Thor movie, Thor is taking off his shirt. Aquaman, Jason Momoa's got no shirt on in the body tattoos. Like, it's always like women pretend they're the only ones who have unrealistic standards. But here's the difference. With dudes, we see a guy in great shape. We think, I got to try and do this. I got to work out. I got to hit the gym. I got to eat better. I got to I gotta try and do something. With women, it's like, this is an impossible beauty standard. Oh my God, this is toxic. I shouldn't have to work. God damn it, now I'm agreeing with Kim. Then I pivoted to beauty media because I want to change the industry and quickly realized how fucked and exploitative that world was. It's why I do what I do now. Critiquing the beauty industry and reporting on the harms of beauty culture for my newsletter, The Unpublishable. If you're here for content that calls out bullshit in the beauty industry, subscribe here. There's a paid tier, but 80% of my content is free. Wait, does that make me a hero? Because I like call out the shit too. Yeah, probably not because I'm a man. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. And the sad thing is, is the bit of truth for that? Is a lot of people don't want to work. My mailman specifically is one of the laziest motherfuckers I've ever encountered in my life, but that's my struggle. And my mailman's so lazy when I go to the pick up mail, the other mail workers talk about how lazy my mailman is. I'm like, Lord, that's how you know someone lazy. But anyway. There's truth in it, but like, it, it's not right coming from them. These are people who live a semi-charmed life. By the time you get three minutes into the video, the mother's talking about how genius Kim is. Oh, Kim was uh, big, showing us how to navigate social media. Yeah, take good photos of yourself. You know, have someone take photos of you laying in a pool, laying on the beach, half naked. <laughs> Make sure your makeup's on point. It's basically Instagram, my God, Kim Kardashian's Instagram is as nothing as every other Kardashian's Instagram. It's literally like, I exist and I look good because I can afford to do so. And they're like, what brilliant marketing. They acted like these chicks are the Warren Buffetts of Instagram. Any chick who's remotely attractive and knows how to take photos of herself can get popular on Instagram, just like TikTok. There's a whole bunch of women that are talentless on TikTok. And they have huge following. And sometimes all they do is like they'll do a little dance or they'll put on some makeup. It's like you follow them around. It's literally like low rent Kardashians with some no name chick you follow because you were horny. Quack. Nothing says hard work from your business like taking a half naked photo. 
of yourself. The funniest part is like you see the comments and people are still parroting the same complaints. They've created unrealistic beauty standards for women. And I'm like, everybody's got unrealistic standards they gotta live with. The average dude can't even go on Tinder to get a date if he doesn't live up to some of these unrealistic standards chicks have. You need to be six feet, have six packs, and make six figures. And meanwhile, this broad looks like she fell down the stairs and then ate cookies on the way down. Look at all these goddamn products. Just taking photos of the products. You didn't research the products. You got teams. Teams of people. Let it go. I'm done. No wonder everybody is triggered on Twitter. I'm getting triggered. I'm sitting here, like, listening to rich people who don't actually do anything. Their television show is based on not doing anything but living their fabulous life. It came off as being very elitist. And let's remember, her mother got her a gig and her, the entire family in 2007 on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I think five years later, 2012, she's been making $10 million a year. And they're like, you need to work. You're lazy. Stop being poor, you fucking idiot. Figure out a way to do as little work as possible and get as much reward as possible. I don't want you to be like me. I'm talking to you like you're my kid. I don't want you out here working on sh damn near 24 seven. You don't have good sleep. You can't think straight. You constantly tired and run down and nothing you ever do is good enough for most people. Like you need to do more of this. And it's like, I am malnourished. <laughs> God, I wish I was a hot chick. I wish I was a hot chick. I wouldn't be doing this. Look at Amaranth. Look at all she was able to accomplish with a set of fake tits. On the, and on the real, you put us versus each other in terms of talent, I blow her clean out of the water. Would I make it a year? I think Amram makes in like a day or less. Less. I can't take it no more, dude, I can't. Oh my God, she makes more on Twitch. I'm dying here, dog. Turn this off, Stowe, turn it off, Stowe. Hello, folks. Today is Friday, March 11th, 2021. No, it's 2022. As you, wow. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. It's a busy week, a lot to talk about. Let's dive in. Uh, just so you know, uh, not looking for sympathy or anything, but like if I'm being weird or I'm a little off my game, I'm recovering from a minor surgery. I'm fine, no big deal. Uh, but if anyone's like, why is Jake being extra weird today? That's what it is. With that out of the way, let's talk about the first story involving Elden Ring, the hottest video game that has been sweeping the nation, or really the world. So in an interview with Famitsu, uh, lead behind From Software and the Soulsborne games, uh, Hidetake Miyazaki went on record with a little bit of advice to newcomers because uh, with Elden Ring having massive popularity, a lot of people are playing a From Software style Souls game for the first time. So Famitsu was like, what's your advice for first time players? And Hidetaka Miyazaki said, basically to relax, which is kind of nice. Uh, so basically he said to embrace death and the concept of trial and error and the repeating to figure things out and get better. That's really the name of the game here. This is not new for people who, you know, aren't new to these games, but I do like that his response is a little bit more nuanced than just get good. Like he talks about relaxing, enjoying yourself and trying to embrace and learn the game. He also detailed, once again, like he has in the past, uh, the fact that this is a little bit more accessible than previous games. It's certainly not the easiest by any means, uh, but just the way some of its open world design works out, you have a little bit more wiggle room, a little bit more freedom to really explore and learn the game at your own pace. Separately, Miyazaki did also confirm that Elden Ring is going to shape their games going forward. Uh, there is going to be influence for more of their games. If you pay attention to their previous titles, uh, you see that. You can see one influencing the other all in certain little ways. Uh, and I think that's good because if anything, I really actually like the open world for Elden Ring. So for that to maybe be a continuing through line for their next games, cool. Also though, holy shit, good luck making another one because Elden Ring's world is massive. It is also worth pointing out with Miyazaki acknowledging new players, noobs, if you will. Uh, a lot of that comes from the fact that this game is like a smash hit, like an absolute blockbuster. So the NPD sales report results just dropped and Elden Ring is at the top of the charts 
by a significant amount. So the Dark Souls and From Software games have sold very well in the past, but now at this point, they can no longer be considered this little hardcore thing. They are out there in full force. And I think for this one, a lot of it is the hype and excitement on social media, the, the FOMO, if you will, uh, as well as the hype leading up, the people just hyping up Elden Ring trailers and where's Elden Ring, where's Elden Ring. I also see a lot of people on social media getting excited, jumping into this game and getting crushed by that first boss or that first sub boss. A lot of people are like really thrown off by it, but it's also been nice to see people overcome and figure it out and learn. And I think even if you don't like From Software games, we can all just say, hooray video games, right? That's the whole point of this show. Let's move on. The other big thing this week was Sony's state of play. This was like a 20 minute state of play. Uh, they tried to set expectations saying, hey, it's gonna be mostly focused on Japanese developers and some smaller updates. And that's essentially what it was. A lot of people were hoping for the announcement of Silent Hill or some crazy thing. And we have talked in the past about rumors like Sly Cooper making a return and stuff like that. I always say take that stuff with a grain of salt because you should set your expectations going in for any announcements, really. But we got a couple of things that are worth highlighting. I'm gonna link the whole thing in the description down below, but the main highlights are really, uh, we're getting a new demo, it's out now, for Final Fantasy Origin, Stranger of Paradise. We also got our first gameplay look at Gundam Evolution, which is essentially Overwatch, but with Gundam. And that's kind of cool, but also weird. It's first person, so you can't see your cool robots, but hey. I'll give it a shot. Hey, next up, this episode is brought to you by our longtime sponsor, Vessi. Now, if you haven't heard about these shoes by now, pay attention, listen up. Uh, these are legit and we've been about these sneakers for a while now. They're really good for any person in any situation because they are comfortable, but uh, more importantly, they're 100% waterproof, which is perfect for this time of year. Now, whether you're feeling the last few surprise snowstorms of the winter or uh, just the rainy spring season, uh, these things got you covered. They don't quit. They're resilient because they're made using Dimatex, a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter, but always dry. And it never feels like you're wearing something waterproof. Uh, they're lightweight and breathable. Uh, they're also sustainably made and they come in a pretty big variety of sizes. Now I've already talked about how I like to wear them in my backyard, but more recently I've realized that they're just great gifts to give people that you truly love. Like I said, they're legit. They're comfy, they're lightweight, they're waterproof, and they're my go-to shoes by my door. So if you want to check them out and get your own pair of Vessies, click the link in the description down below or go to Vessie.com. And as always, big thanks to Vessie for sponsoring our videos. Something that I was excited to see was the TMNT Cowabunga collection. Uh, this essentially is a collection of a bunch of retro Ninja Turtles games. A uh, lot of winners, a lot of losers in there, but all pretty awesome and nostalgic. This collection is launching this year and I believe it's 40 bucks. So that's, that's a win, especially if you're a turtle head like me. Turtle head? Is that what you call Ninja Turtle fans? Turtle club? Am I into turtle club? I also want to highlight Gigabash, which is like a multiplayer kaiju monster battler. That's up my alley. I like destroy all monsters and stuff like that. So another trailer to Trek to Yomi, which I should have put this on my 2022 most anticipated list because this, this looks sick. And this just reminded me of that. And we're getting a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game. It's a fighting game and it looks absolutely nuts. It's coming out this fall. The Dio Field Chronicle was also announced for PS5 and PS4. Returnal is getting co-op, which is pretty sick. I think that game Definitely could use something cool like that. A lot of people need to be carried through that game. So there you go. Also, we got Valkyrie Elysium. This is coming to PS4 and PS5 in 2022. We got some gameplay and stuff. It might not seem like much for you, but if you're a fan of the Valkyrie series, it's really nice that those games are having a comeback. But last but not least, can we talk about Exo Primal? My God. So, ugh. so this is a Capcom game. And the trailer starts playing out and there's dinosaurs and then there's a woman in black in tactical gear with red hair, short red hair. Dino Crisis, right? That's what I was thinking. I was freaking out, but also looking at this trailer and it's very much like I was like, oh, they're going, they're continuing after Dino Crisis 3 and they're going full just dumb sci-fi anime, huh? Oh boy, this is not the Dino Crisis I wanted. And then the title popped up, Exo Primal. Turns out it's not even a Dino Crisis game. But what? <laughs> what are they doing? I don't know if that was a troll. I don't know if there's more to the story of this game. <laughs> I don't know. I just, what a, what a roller coaster of emotions I went through watching that. Next up in some updates, the original Dying Light 
is being updated still. Uh, I've always talked about how these games just continue to get support, and it's good to see, and I'm hoping that the same continues for Dying Light 2, but the original Dying Light is now going to be more playable on the next generation consoles. It's also getting an update on the previous gen consoles, like the pro versions of it, so that's good for both PlayStation and Xbox. And along with that, WWE 2K22 is releasing this week. Uh, we linked the trailer, uh, and word on the street is it's good that they took a year off and that this game is pretty great. We're jumping into it. We'll have a quick before you buy out soon, some information for you, but there you have it. And in an interesting news, some of you guys on social media asked me to talk about this, uh, Elite Dangerous has some pretty significant updates. So the Odyssey update, the, the huge expansion launched on PC, it's had some issues, it's needed some things uh, worked out, and along with that, the developers behind Elite Dangerous have announced that they are ceasing development on the console versions of the game. Other than like critical, crucial updates, they're not working on it anymore, meaning it's not going to get that new expansion. And that's unfortunate. It seems like a lot of console players are feeling pretty burned on that. The developers say that they still just want to take their resources and make Elite Dangerous on PC to be the best thing it could ever be. And I will say, Elite Dangerous on PC is a pretty incredible thing when you boil it down, but I guess it's a result of it being a smaller developer. It's a shame, like, if you're going to commit to putting a game on a console, maybe really try and commit, but unfortunately, it seems like they just couldn't do that here. Oh, and also in Steam Deck news, you may have seen uh, Steam Deck is now going to be capable of running Windows. It was already a thing, uh, but Valve has just pretty quickly updated this thing with drivers uh, supporting a lot of Windows aspects. So there's a thing. There's obviously a lot more to it. It's not as cool and easy as it sounds. I'll link the whole thing in the description down below if you're interested, if you're a weird Steam Deck nerd like me. We're gonna have a video on the Steam Deck next week, and I'm so excited. Also, just wanna link some cool things in the description down below. The first, hey, have you ever wanted to watch a three and a half hour long YouTube video about Deus Ex? I certainly have, and this video from H Bomber Guy totally freaking delivers. Here, he is at the top of his craft. Uh, he understands these types of immersive sims better than anyone, clearly, from this video. It's just a great breakdown of Deus Ex Human Revolution and a lot of things around it. It goes places, and I highly recommend watching it. I'm only about three quarters of the way through it still, but yes, go. Along with that, I wanted to share this. Uh, this is from Voyager's Revenge, friend of the show. Uh, this is a Sifu presentation. Batman style, uh, specifically the Batman uh, with the skin, uh, but it's edited with the music and stylized to really be something that you watch, not just essentially a gameplay video of a Batman mod. Uh, this is super well done, and I gotta say, the fighting animations and, and, and the moveset really does actually work well with Batman here, and I, I love this. If you wanna check out this stuff, everything I talk about is linked in the description down below. Because we got some release date updates, baby! It wouldn't be a week without release dates shifting and moving. The first is that Dead Space remake, which I believe today is going to be getting a little bit of developer news, but uh, the insider reports right now are suggesting that this game was originally intended for the end of 2022, but now it is going to be 2023. So you're going to be waiting a bit. Also, we didn't talk about it in the state of play thing, but Forspoken has now been pushed from releasing pretty recently to now October 11th, 2022. That game seems like it needs more time in the oven. I will say the trailer at the state of play was like the first trailer that really I was like, oh, okay, this seems kind of cool. But there's still a lot of questions about that one, so I'm glad that they're taking their time on it. Also, Gotham Knights now officially has a release date. It is October 25th, 2022. And from what I've seen, the developers actually seem pretty confident of this release date. Granted, they move all the time, but hopefully that's when we finally see this one. If anything, I could just keep talking about Batman. I've talked about Batman a lot in this video, and I could keep going, but I need to stop because we are on a time limit. And as a follow-up to last week, uh, we talked about how the game industry has kind of been rallying around uh, the, the crisis in Ukraine and everything going on. I talked about how there was a bundle in the works to support charities, and uh, now it's out. And I wanted to link that in the description down below. For like 10 bucks, you can get access to a bundle of like seemingly hundreds of indie games, all different genres. And that money goes to support efforts towards helping people, Ukrainian citizens. And like I said last week, the power of gaming, like they've already raised, they've already crossed their goal. They've raised $4 million for efforts. This is insane charity. The gaming industry and just people who play video games are, like really are freaking unstoppable. Between this and various streamers raising money and YouTubers, it's incredible. So. Go check that out, support what you can, and be safe out there. We gotta go. Uh, so, 
That's a that's a Friday show. Really, I was gonna say that's a before you buy. You know how that goes, but I'm I'm like I'm broken. Let us know what you think about everything going on this week. Let us know what you think of the state of play. Were you expecting a Jack and Daxter four announcement and you didn't get it? And now you're never gonna you're gonna throw your PlayStation in the trash. That's what people write in comments, and I think that's crazy. But still, with your expectations, you know, were you happy with some of the JRPG stuff announced? Have you gotten your hands on a Steam Deck? Are you looking forward to that? If you did get one, have you been messing with it? Are you putting windows on it? Are you crazy? Let's talk. Let's talk about all that stuff. Oh, especially also your favorite retro Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game. I'd love to hear that. There's an obvious answer, but I'm not going to spell it out for you. Uh, let's talk about anything down in the comments. We want to hear from you, of course. Uh, also, the pinned comment where you drop what you're currently playing. Please definitely consider leaving what you're currently playing for our research purposes. But we'll be down in the comments as much as possible, but things get a little crazy. So if you want to yell at me directly, of course, find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino. But if you like this show, you like getting informed, you like hanging out with your old Uncle Grandpa Jake, <laughs> clicking the like button's all you got to do. We really appreciate it. But thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Have fun. Be safe. I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time. Pizza's on me. Welcome to Elden Ring. I can't believe we finally made it to the launch. First things first, let's beat the tutorial boss. I mean, I call it a tutorial boss, but this place isn't a tutorial. You're not gonna learn much here. I mean, you, you're gonna learn how to die. That's about it. This boss is tough. Plus the reset for this area, if you wanna beat this boss first try, it just takes ages. So learning his moveset is a hassle and you need to learn his moveset. So eat your boiled prawns and get ready. So you're probably wondering, what's the reward for beating this boss? Is it worth it? I want to say yes, it is worth it, especially if you want a powerful weapon and a powerful shield for the early game. By watching this video, I think I can help you get them. So every boss has attacks you want to look out for. That was one of them. It's very exploitable. And so is this. If you see that attack winding up, then you'll have plenty of time to mentally prepare for the parry. Although, the parry window is pretty tight, as you can see there. So if you try this, you're going to want to choose a class with a 100% physical block shield. The Vagabond and the Confessor both have one. The Vagabond has a lot more health and better armor than the Confessor, but the Confessor has a heal, which means there's a little bit of room for error. But the best starting class for this encounter, anyway, is definitely the samurai. I mean, he comes with a longbow and a ton of arrows and a really good longbow weapon art that just lets you destroy this boss from range. You don't even have to really learn the intricacies of too many of his attacks. So who is this boss? The Grafted Scion. The name alone is super poetic, and it tells us so much. So, grafting is a horticultural procedure whereby tissues of plants are joined so they can continue their growth together. Now, a scion is a young shoot or a twig of a plant that is specifically chosen for this purpose. So, this boss might have been chosen for the purpose of grafting. But a scion also has another double meaning in that a scion is a descendant of a notable family. And based on the weapons this boss is wielding, there's definitely some nobility there. The description of his swords reads, After falling from grace, the dregs of the golden lineage sought power and purpose in the past. I wonder if the process of grafting was a part of this past, and I assume they're resorting to this depraved act to get their power back. That was a good fight. Man, just the feeling of practicing and overcoming difficulty is so rewarding, and it's absolutely there in Elden Ring. 
Some bosses are easy, but some you really have to learn everything about them. And that means there's something here for every type of player, I think. These swords should appeal to every player. They only require 14 dexterity and 10 strength. The shield, on the other hand, requires 24. So where do we go now? Well, you walk forward here, and a great crow carries your way. Or not. So I'm skipping ahead here. I've leveled up my character a fair bit, and I've cleared pretty much all of the stuff that was within the fog in the closed network test. It's definitely time to move on from that content. We're headed south. So the concept with this edited playthrough is to have a really good 30, 35 minute session with the game, going through a lot of really good story beats and exciting gameplay encounters and showing great things that you might have missed and showing off tips, everything. So this route that I'm taking through the world, it's really heavily planned out, but it has to be executed perfectly in my eyes. And I've actually attempted this run multiple times by reloading my saves. I was pretty happy with how this one went. Hello folks, today is Friday, March 11th. 